Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factor. Today we're going to talk about web sequence diagrams, what they are, why they're so powerful, why they're so helpful, and just how easy it is to actually use them, get them up and running, and it's really a great talking point when trying to figure out you know, any kind of well, a flow, a sequence, uh, anything along those lines. So as we see here, we are just at this websequencediagrams.com. It's a free website that you can use to build these out with a very simple syntax here. And if we take a look over here on the right, we'll see the output of what we see on the left, right? Um, so we have a very clear, very clean way of kind of describing different entities, how they interact, and then over time as you build it out, you build out the sequence of a particular flow, which could be a super helpful tool from you know, a system design perspective or even just you know, thinking something out in your head, whatever the case is. Uh, it's, it's really, really powerful. So let's take a look over here on the left. We see here that we have uh, a title, untitled, and then we have this notion of kind of like an entity and an arrow, another entity, colon, and then some information. And that translates over here to you know those two entities being related to one another uh, you know, in some sense. We'll see here there's other little fancy things, note to the right of Bob, Bob thinks about it, and we see how that renders here in the UI. So it's really just kind of like a very simple um, syntax to build out a little bit of a diagram, super helpful, super simple. Over here on the side, you can go ahead and click all these, uh, you know, different options here. There is the free version, and then at the end here, we do get into some, like, premium content here. I really haven't had a need for any of the premium content, but you can you can get a little crazy here with some of these things just with the free content, but realistically, sometimes just arrows and boxes uh, cascading in order is really all that we need. So this is great. This is just a simple exercise. Let's go ahead and build something out here uh, that's just outside of code base, right? So we're just going to call this dinner, and we're going to explain or, or go through the process of basically when you go out to eat, you know, placing an order, getting food paying for it and leaving, right? So let's imagine you are sitting down, you are the customer here, and you uh, you know talk to the waiter in this case, and you tell them the order. All right, pretty straightforward here. We then, uh, as the waiter, the waiter would go to the kitchen here, and the waiter would notify of the incoming order. We'll see here how everything updates in real time, and you'll see how this starts to kind of you know, build out a little bit. So we can then have a nice little kitchen to kitchen moment here where chefs pick up and complete order. And we'll see that gets rendered as this little arrow that is looping and pointing to itself here. Then let's say the order is complete. So the kitchen goes to the waiter and it buys of order completion. Then our waiter takes the food out to the customer. And we'll see here then our customer is going to enjoy the meal. Once the customer is complete here, we will then, uh, you know, as customary, we will signal for the check here. The waiter then brings the check to the customer. Our customer to the waiter, kind of going back and forth here, uh, supplies payment information. The waiter is going to go over to the payment station, for lack of a better term, and, you know, uh, completes payment and then the waiter returns to our customer okay so uh, hopefully you know we've fallen along there we could see that it's very straightforward here but we kind of just outlined you know the the process here in which when you go out to eat you place the order people cook something for you they give it back to you you eat it and all that kind of stuff right and at the end of the day over here although this is not necessarily a technical document uh, this does showcase the ability of this web sequence diagram so you could see the different entities pretty easily up here right the customer waiter kitchen and the payment station you could see how frequently some of them interact right the customer and waiter are interacting a lot more because there's a lot more in this swim lane here the waiter and kitchen interact in the very beginning and then really never again right and then payment uh, and the waiter only interact at the end so you can kind of start to see if you were to um, you know imagine this scenario or imagine this situation in some technical terms you could see you know what relies on what what information can happen in parallel or what operations need to happen sequentially uh, you know all that kind of good stuff and so sometimes this is just a really powerful tool to get your thoughts down on paper and then it can kind of act as something that you can share with somebody else uh, quite easily and then we can you know you, you can talk with them about hey this is a little weird actually why don't we change this around to interact with this instead of that and then we can cut out all this middle stuff where we should do this first and then we do that one 
whatever the case is. And so hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully this is, um, you know, you can find use of this in your own day-to-day -day life or, uh, you know, work or whatever the case is. But this is an Android channel. We do cover a lot of Android content here. So why don't we go ahead and just make a little bit of a diagram here that's a little bit more Android specific so that we could see it applied to, you know, what we love and what we know. So if you made it this far in the video, appreciate you. Subscribe if you are brand new, smash that like button here. And uh, we are just gonna continue on with a little bit of extra credit here for let's go with um, like an Android API request. Okay, so we're gonna have a screen here. That screen is going to talk to a view model, right? Pretty traditional. Um, let's say on start here by Pacific ID for fetching. Uh, our view model then has a repository. Let's say this is movie information, right? And that ID is the uh, ID of a movie. So then we will fetch uh, movie by ID. The repository is going to communicate to the API at this point, right? All right, so let's just imagine there is an endpoint here, API v1 movies movie ID. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Our API is then going to return back to our repository, um, the network response. Let's then say our repository wants to communicate to a mapper here uh, to actually you know, transform uh, network data into domain data. Sounds good. Then the mapper is going to return that back to the repository and it's kind of auto filling in some stuff here. So sorry about that. Then uh, from the repository, we're gonna go out to our view model here, or maybe not consume if we're using flow or something like that, we can emit updates. And then ultimately here, our view model to screen, this will receive the updated information here. All right, and taking a look at the uh, you know little graph that it spit out here, we do have something that you can just very easily follow along with the different you know operations, the different steps that are actually happening here, how things are laid out, and then, you know, if you were to just imagine the, the screen perspective of things, right, we're just going to uh, notify some view model of, you know, some, some ID that we need to fetch. And then eventually, you know, there is some loading period in between here. Eventually, we're going to receive those updates and the screen doesn't necessarily need to care about how it is actually doing all of this, right? It just knows I have an entry point to a view model. I have that data coming out of that view model at some point, right, probably via a flow. And then all of this stuff, repository, API, this mapper, any other helper classes, any other additional services, you know, however many API calls we need, all that stuff is obfuscated away from our screen. And to some degree, it's even obfuscated away from our view model, right? And then the repository API and mapper layer is kind of all just, you know, network jargon that no one else needs to care about. They just need to know, all right, I give you an ID for the movie. Let me get that update and I'll pass it along here for the screen. So let me know what you think here. Uh, this is a pretty interesting you know, uh, concept here, pretty, pretty powerful free website if you ask me. I've used it a handful of times uh, over the years here for personal use, professional use, whatever the case is. It is a really nice, simple, clean way to sometimes break down a complicated problem uh, and then you can kind of get a bunch of people thinking about it and, and solving the right task. Uh, you know, together and such. So let me know if this is new, if this is interesting. Let me know if you want me to do this inside of, you know, the seasons and the content that we have on the channel to maybe outline some of the, uh, you know, the goals for the episode or some of the networking operations that we do. Uh, you know, sometimes it's easier to consume that information in a, in a visual format than just listening to someone talk about it. So let me know if it'd be helpful. Let me know your thoughts. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.